Good evening everyone, welcome back to another photo editing tutorial. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Loic Ben Mahalford, a young photographer and filmmaker on the journey to become better at this art. Every two weeks I publish a video where I show how I edit one of my shots. This week we're going to be talking about one of the shots I captured using the DJI Pocket 2. If you don't know what is this camera, you can go check out the review I published last week. Now let's start editing this shot and for this I'm going to be using my favorite mobile editing app which is Lightroom on my Google Pixel 4a and it's pretty impressive that we can edit a 120 megabyte picture on my Pixel 4a. The first thing we're going to look at inside of Lightroom here is the crop option. So we're not really going to crop the picture but we're going to make the horizon uh, a little bit more leveled so we're just going to come here and bring it down a little bit so let's see something like this and I'm looking at the trees to make sure that the trees are vertical with the vertical lines in the picture. So we're going to bring it to something I would say um, about like this and this is pretty good. It's kind of hard to do on a mobile phone but this seems to be pretty good. So once this is done we're going to go in the next tab here which is light and this is actually where we're going to see how much information there actually is in this raw file and it's pretty impressive. So if we go down here we can see we have all the details inside of the highlights of the sky and if we bring it back up here we can see we have all the details also inside of the shadows and this was one question I got from people why do raw pictures matters and it's because of this because you have all the details that are uh, in the highlights and also all the details in the shadows. And this is really impressive considering it's coming from a tiny camera, the DJI Pocket 2. Uh, so yes, it's really impressive. So for the highlights here, we're going to leave them uh, around something here. We're going to expose it for the highlights. Then we're going to bring up the contrast. And by bringing up some contrast, we're going to get more of the separation in the foreground here. And also it's going to make the colors pop a little bit more in the background. Then if we come inside of highlights here, we're going to bring the highlights down completely. And you're going to see uh, that inside of the sky, it really changes everything when we bring down the highlights. So I just realized my exposure might be a little bit too low. So I'm going to bring back up the exposure just a little bit here. Then we're going to go inside of shadows here and we're going to bring up the shadows to the maximum because we saw there isn't that much noise in the shadows. So we're going to get more detail by bringing back up the shadows. Then we're going to bring up the whites here and by bringing up the whites, it's just going to make the picture pop a little bit more uh, by making the points that are white uh, a little bit brighter. Then we're going to bring up the blacks. We could bring them down to get more contrast, but I think just bring actually bring them down just a little bit to around minus 14 is looking pretty good. Then we're going to go inside of the color tab here. And in this tab, we're not going to touch the temperature or tint. We're going to leave them like that, but we're going to bring up a vibrance. And vibrance is better uh, to use than saturation because if you bring saturation to the max here, it brings every single color value to its maximum possible value. And that's not what you want. So saturation, if you go uh, a little bit too far, it's kind of a terrible result. So we're just going to bring it up to around, I would say five, something like that. But vibrance, if you bring it up, it brings the color, makes the colors pop but not the same way as uh, saturation does. So for this one, we can bring it up a little bit more here. So around 40 is actually pretty good because we still want to have these nice colors from the sky. Next tab here is the effects tabs. Uh, we're not going to touch the texture. We're not going to touch the clarity because I don't really use them that much, but we're going to use the haze here just to add a little bit. And this is going to help remove some of the haze inside of the sky and inside of the shot and just get a little bit more contrast in the shot here. Then we're going inside of the details uh, panel and if we zoom in inside of the branches here to have a little bit better idea of what it looks like, we can see there's already a lot of detail inside of the shot. But if we come here and we just bring up uh, the sharpness, we can bring it up to let's say something like 70 and we're just going to get a little bit more detail in the branches here. Then we're going to apply a little bit of noise reduction. Uh, so let's say something like 20, I think 20 is pretty good. Um, and this is just going to help if we look at the branches here and we're also going to apply some color noise reduction. I forgot about that. And it's really going to help inside of the branches here once it process the change here to remove some of this annoying noise we had in the shadows. And now we have a pretty clean image in the shadows here. The next step is going in the next tab right here. So if you didn't understand yet, uh, Lightroom was made that you go tab by tab to edit your shots. So it's a really simple way of editing. You can remove chromatic aberration. Uh, there isn't much inside of this shot, so it's not making a big difference. And what is really cool with the raw pictures 
from DJI is that they have built-in lens profile uh, information inside of the raw file. So Lightroom can use that already to apply a correction for this wide angle picture uh, that we got. So it's already applied. We don't have to do anything here about it. So if we look at our original shot right here, so I'm just gonna click on the picture here. We look at the original one and our edit one. It wasn't a really complex edit, but we can see it's a huge difference on the result we have right here. So now we're ready to go and export. So we're gonna go inside of the menu here, export as. We're gonna leave it as JPEG, leave the dimension as large as available, quality 100, and we're gonna click on export and we're just gonna wait a few seconds for the export to be done. So the photo just finished exporting and if we go inside of the Adobe folder inside of uh, photos here we're gonna actually gonna see our exports we have the picture right here and it's kind of incredible how much detail there is in the 64 megabyte file coming from this tiny sensor because if we zoom inside of here we can actually see the chair right here uh, we're just gonna wait a few seconds to get it clear but we have all the details inside of the chair here and the bone in the background and if we actually look at the other side here and we zoom in we can actually perfectly see the canoe uh, in perfect details, which is really incredible because when you zoom back out, you're gonna see how tiny the canoe and the chair actually are. So it's actually really impressive how good and how high quality the pictures from this tiny camera are and how much flexibility you have inside of the raw picture to edit it. The reason I like Lightroom so much compared to most mobile photo editing app is that first of all, I have the catalog of all my pictures so I can quickly access any of the pictures and also go through them and rate them or review them so I can quickly select them and place a review. So this is great when I come back from a trip and I have 3,000 or something like that and I want to select quickly all my favorite shots and if I have a picture here that I want to edit I can actually just come in here and that's actually a picture I had on my desktop that automatically sync to the app here and I can come here look at my settings and change my settings as I want wherever I am uh, which is really great because a lot of times I take a picture, I did it the first time, come back the next day, decide to change it a little bit, and I do that a few times until I decide for the final edit. So this is a huge feature that most other apps don't really have, like Snapseed. You can only import a picture and you use all your edits when you save it at the end as a JPEG. So this is really a must have feature when you have so many pictures like I do. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like below. It really does help the channel. And also consider subscribing because I'm going to be releasing a new tutorial on photo editing every single two weeks. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.